Hey guys, you're watching Dansky, and if you've ever wanted to create beautiful lettering in Photoshop, I think you're going to enjoy this one. So how is it possible to create beautiful lettering even if you're relatively new to Photoshop? Well, if we break it down, this Photoshop text effect is comprised of a font, some stylistic flourishes, and some shading added with the brush tool, and that's pretty much it. So without further ado, let's hop into Photoshop and get started. Rightio, so we're now in Photoshop. Let's start by creating a new document. We'll go with 3840 by 2160 for the size and click Create. Next, it's time to grab a font. So I'm going to switch over to Envato Elements, millions of assets, link in the description. And I'm going to do a search for Gothic. I'm then going to filter out by fonts and I'm going to select this font here. Ooh, very nice, Catedrale, or however you say it. Anyway, I'm going to download the font with the big download button and then open up the zip folder, extract all of these different files, go into the folder and look for an OTF or TTF. Install either of these and you can see this font comes with a few alternative styles as well. One of which is labeled ornament and we get a few extra swooshes and flourishes here. So that's going to be very useful. Now, if your newly installed fonts don't appear automatically, don't panic, just restart Photoshop and you should be good to go. So once your font's installed, first we're going to grab the paint bucket and then fill the background with black, then select the type tool, click anywhere and type a word. And then with my text selected, I can use this icon at the top to open up the character and paragraph panels. And then I can select my newly installed font and then customize all of the different settings. So in this example, I'm just going to increase the tracking slightly to give a little bit more space between each of the letters. When you're happy, select the main selection tool again, go to edit and down to free transform. You can now hold shift and scale this up and then position this nicely in the center. Double click to set that transformation, select the text and then from the color picker at the top, select a color. I'm going to go with red. And at this point, it's probably worth going to file down to save as, giving your file a name and then saving as a PSD. Okay, next I'm going to select my text and press Command or Control J to duplicate that layer. And then once I've done that, I'm going to hide one of these layers and on the other layer, select the text and I'm going to change the font to the ornament style. And you can see each letter corresponds to a different symbol. So now I'm going to start pressing both uppercase and lowercase letters on my keyboard to create a variety of different flourishes and swooshes that I can then attach to my lettering. So there we go, that's a pretty good start. What I'm going to do next is turn my text layer back on and then adjust the size, position and rotation of all of these different flourishes so they fit together nicely with the lettering. Ooh, looking good. Okay, next I'm going to select all of the letters holding shift and then command or control G to group these together and give this group a name. I'm going to duplicate this group and keep one as a backup. And then the top one, right click and select convert to smart object. I'm then going to right click and select rasterize layer. So Photoshop will treat this like any other image. No, stop waving it around. Next, let's zoom in nice and close and select everyone's favorite, the pen tool. And then from the drop down at the top, select path, press the cap locks key if you'd like a more precise cursor. And then we're going to click and drag out to draw out the shape where we're going to be applying the shading on our first letter. Now, as you drag this out, you can use the handles on either end to control the curvature and anything outside the letters doesn't really matter. So ignore the fact this is terrible and then complete the path. Next, you can switch over to the paths panel on the right, and then you have the work path that you've just created. You can also use the path selection tool to select that path or the direct selection tool to select and move the anchor points or to adjust the curvature. 
Now let's switch back to the pen tool and with this path selected we can right click and make selection. Leave this set to zero and click OK. Now we have a selection we can switch back to the layers panel and then from the bottom of this panel add a new layer and we'll call this new layer shading. Now with the shading layer selected, I'm going to select a color. I'm going to go with black, but you can use any color you like. And I'm then going to select the brush tool. And then from the drop down at the top, I'm going to select one of Photoshop's default soft round pressure opacity brushes. Adjust the size of the brush using the slider or the left and right square brackets on your keyboard. Now, because this is a nice soft feathered brush, I'm going to make my brush a little bit bigger. And then once you're happy with your brush size, just brush in your shading. Now, if you mess it up, you can go to edit and undo. And you can see in this example, I'm going to go with something a little bit less intense and more subtle. And apparently I'm still not happy. So I'm going to repeat this process until I get something that I'm happy with. Another technique you can use is go up to opacity, bring that down from 100%. And again, this is another way to make your brush strokes a little bit less pronounced. Seriously, Dan, you're still not happy? Come on, man, just let it go. And once you've finished one section of one letter, you can do the same technique on the bottom and any other parts of the letter too. Once you're finished, go up to select, deselect, and it will deselect the selection. Next, repeat those same steps for any other parts of the letter that you would like to apply shading to. Now for this letter, I'm going to do one more path. And in reality, it's much faster to do all of your pen tooling and then all of your shading all in one go. So let's just complete this path go back to the paths panel and then hold command or control, click on the work path and that's a quick way to make a selection. And then it's back to the brush tool to brush in that shading. Well, hey, finally, one letter done, only nine more to go. So it's back to the pen tool and we're going to do the same thing again. And you might enjoy watching this with a nice cup of tea, or you can use the timestamps in the description to skip to the next step. Wow, so as you can see, that's a lot of paths. What we can do is double click the work path, give it a name and save it just in case you ever need it again. Next, make a selection, grab that brush tool and start brushing in all of the shadows. Now, once you've done an area, you can use the lasso tool to deselect that part of the selection just so you don't go over it again. And you can also use the eraser tool if you need to erase a shadow that bleeds from one letter onto the other. Because of course, these letters are very close together. And as you can see, I'm clicking with the brush tool and it's applying it to multiple parts of that selection. So to get around this, lasso tool and eraser tool. Now, if you have the same letter more than once, you don't need to pen tool them both unless you want to. So in this example, now I'm going to use the lasso tool to select the shading for the letter A and then go up to edit, select copy, and then go to edit and select paste. I can then move this over to where the other letter A is positioned and then spend ages trying to line this shading up. Like seriously, this took far too long. There we go, he's got it. 
So once you've copied your shading over, select both layers and go merge layers, just because I want to keep all of my shading on a single layer, and then repeat that process for any other duplicate letters. Now you can see we're almost done, so I'm just going to spend a moment using the lasso tool, the brush tool, and the eraser tool to finesse all of my shading and work towards a completed design. Okie dokie, looking pretty swish. What we can do now is we can turn our shading layer off and back on to see the difference. You can also duplicate the shading layer if you'd like to make the effect more pronounced, or you can use the opacity slider to make it a bit more subtle. Lastly, we're going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer from the bottom of the layers panel. Make sure this is positioned just above your text layer, add a clipping mask so it only affects that layer, and then you can adjust the hue, saturation and lightness to change the colour of your text. And after making all of those adjustments to the colour, I basically ended up with red again, albeit slightly darker. And there we go, so that wraps up the video. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, you got the old subscribe button. You can ring the bell for notifications. Take care, and I'll see you next time.